Welcome to the second part of Fundamental Concepts of Computer Networks. In this lecture, you are going to learn about how data is transmitted from one computer on one network to another computer in another network through cables or wireless media. We will give you a broad overview of both OSI and TCP IP reference model which attempt to describe how data communication takes place. Finally, we will compare both models. To reduce design complexity, most networks are organized as a stack of layers or levels, each one built upon the one below it. Between each pair of adjacent layers is an interface. The interface defines which primitive operations and services the lower layer makes available to the upper layer. This modular approach reduces design complexity and provides efficient message delivery. Based on these ideas, two reference architecture models are proposed, namely the OSI and TCP IP model. But before we discuss them, let me clarify two important terms. A protocol is a set of rules that governs data communications. For example, TCP, IP, HTTP, FTP are commonly used protocols. Basically, it is an agreement between communicating parties on how communication is to proceed. Next, let's discuss what a packet is. Packets are essentially discrete units of potentially variable length blocks of data. A message usually contains one or many packets. Now let's look at the OSI model. OSI stands for the Open Systems Interconnection Model. It is a conceptual model that characterizes and standardizes the internal functions of a communication system by partitioning it into abstraction layers. It was proposed by the International Standards Organization. The model organizes communication functions into seven logical layers. A layer serves the layer above it and is served by the layer below it. In developing the model, each layer defines a family of functions distinct from those of the other layer. Each layer calls upon the services just below it. Also remember that when a packet moves from the upper layer to the lower layer, encapsulation of packets takes place. It is also known as protocol layering, which means that lower layer wraps the content of the higher layer by adding its own information to make a new message for transmission. It is similar to sending a letter in an envelope using the postal mail. Next, let's discuss peer-to-peer -peer process communication. In order for data to travel from the source to the destination, each layer of the OSI model at the source must communicate with its peer at the destination. This form of communication is referred to as peer-to-peer -peer process communication. During this process, the protocols of each layer exchange information which is known as protocol data units or PDUs. Each layer of communication on the source computer communicates with a layer-specific PDU and with its peer layer on the destination computer. In this figure, an instance of protocol P in layer N plus 1 of node N1 communicates with an instance of the same protocol P of node N2. Also between each layer, there is an interface and the lower layer protocol Q provides services to the upper layer protocol P. Now let's discuss various functions of each layer. The topmost layer is the application layer, which is also known as layer 7. It supports various functions needed by end users. The application layer 
contains various protocols that are frequently used by users such as HTTP for browsing the web, SMTP for sending email, FTP for file transfer, and so on. Layer 6 is the presentation layer. It transforms data into the form that the application layer accepts and is responsible for formatting, compression, encryption, and decryption. Layer 5 is the session layer. It establishes manages and terminates the connections between the local and remote application, controls dialog between nodes. The next layer is layer 4, which is the transport layer. It provides end-to-end -end reliable delivery of message from one process to another. Layer 3 is the network layer. It provides addressing and routing, delivery of individual packets from source to destination. Layer 2 or the data link layer is responsible for moving frames from one node to the next. Packets in layer 2 are called frames. Finally, layer 1 is the physical layer that is responsible for actual transmission of bits through wires or cables or even wireless media. It describes the physical characteristics of media and electrical and physical specifications of the devices. It coordinates the functions required to transmit a bit stream over a physical medium. Now let us describe the TCP IP model. The TCP IP model has five layers, namely application, transport, network, data link, and physical. The distinction between the data link and physical layer is not very clear and often those two layers are called network access layer. The figure shows examples of protocols that operate on each layer. Commonly used application layer protocols are FTP for file transfer, SMTP for email, and HTTP for web browsing, DNS for finding domain names and their corresponding IP addresses. It is just like the telephone directory for the World Wide Web. TCP and UDP are popular transport layer protocols, whereas IP and ICMP are designed for the network layer. The data link layer protocols are Ethernet 802.3 and point-to-point -point, as well as 802.11 wireless LANs. T1 and 10 T are commonly used standards for the physical layer. Now let us look at how a packet moves from one node to another in TCP IP networks. From the application layer, the packet goes down to transport layer and a TCP header is added. Why TCP? Because TCP is a transport layer protocol, hence a TCP header is added. This wrapping of a packet by the lower layer protocol is called encapsulation. Next. The packet goes to the network layer and notice that an IP header is added as IP is a network layer protocol. From there, the packet goes to data link layer where a MAC protocol header and trailer like 802.3 Ethernet is added. Then the packet is converted to a bit stream which is strings of zeros and ones and goes to the physical medium to the physical layer of node 2. From there, it goes to the data link layer and then moves upwards. During this process, at each layer, header and trailer, if any, are removed, just like peeling the onions. Eventually, the packet arrives at the application layer of node 2. Although the actual transmission is vertical, each layer is programmed as if the transmission were horizontal. Now let us compare these two models. The OSI model has seven layers, whereas TCP IP model has fewer layers. In the TCP IP model, session and presentation layers are absent. Presentation and session layer issues are handled by the application layer. The distinction between data link and physical layer are not very clear. Actually, it combines the data link and physical layers into what is known as network access layer. The OSI model introduced concept of services, interface, and protocols. In the TCP IP model, these were incorporated later. The OSI model is standardized first 
and then implement it. TCP IP model, on the other hand, has been implemented first and then standardized later. It took a long time to standardize the OSI model and also it is very complex in nature. The TCP IP model were already in wide use before OSI became standardized. The TCP IP model is also very ad hoc in nature and not very general. Today, uh, the OSI model is no longer in use. However, the TCP IP model is widely used in practice. The TCP IP protocols are standards around which the internet has been developed. So the TCP IP model gains credibility just because of its protocols. In contrast, networks are not usually built on the OSI model, even though the OSI model is used as a guide.